Well, good Friday morning, everybody, and welcome to June 4th. Um, today, we are going to be continuing our way through the 18th chapter of Acts. Uh, today, we're going to look at verses 12 to 17. Um, we've already had Paul getting to Corinth. He's still in Corinth, and uh, he's staying uh, with Priscilla and Aquila um, and working on making tents. And we know that uh, that uh, Silas and Timothy have finally caught up to him, and they're all there working. And God had given him a vision or a, a dream where he said that one night the Lord said to Paul in a vision, Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one will lay a hand on you to harm you, for there are many in this city who are my people. And those are verses 9 and 10 of chapter 18 that we looked at yesterday. So that's we're going to continue on in that, and we're going to see that that coming into play today. So today we are looking at, again, 12 to 17 in the 18th chapter of Acts. So let's just jump right into it. But when Gallo was proconsulate of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him before the tribunal. They said, this man is persuading people to worship God in ways that are contrary to the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Gallo said to the Jews, if, I were, if it were a matter of crime or serious villainy, villainy, I would be justified in accepting the complaint of you Jews. But since it is a matter of questions about words and names and your own law, see to it yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of these matters. And he dismissed them from the tribunal. Then all of them seized Sosthenes, the official of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal. But Gallo paid no attention to any of these things. Okay. <clears throat> and now, first of all, this the, the verses 9 and 10 come into play here. But Gallo, um, Gallo is somebody we know about. We know who he is. We know that there are different places where there's testimony about how fair, how just, how wise this man was. Um, he was a friend of Claudius, um, and he was the son of Seneca the orator, who was famous, and he's the brother of Seneca the philosopher, who I think is even more famous than the father, um, but and was an advisor uh, to the Roman emperor, um, and who was, along with Gallo, and along with Paul and Peter, uh, executed by the, uh, well, it looks like we might have had a, a blip, blip there. Uh, so Claudia, or uh, Gallo was the brother of Seneca, the philosopher, the son of Seneca, the orator, and he was an, a friend of Claudius, the emperor. We also know that Gallo, along with his brother Seneca, the, the philosopher, and along with Peter and Paul, uh, they were all executed by Nero when Nero came to power um, about 10 years after the fact of what we're looking at today. Um, so that's, he, he is a somebody. He's not just a nobody. He's not somebody of no account. He is a very, uh, uh, he's a documented figure, and he is a highly regarded figure. He's highly regarded for his fairness and his wisdom. So um, he has, the, the Jews have come together and have drugged Paul into the tribunal, trying to get him in trouble, saying like, hey, look, you know, kind of like siblings, you know, tattling on one another. It's basically, this is how uh, Gallo is seeing this, it, it looks like. You Jews, he's equating Paul and the, the Jewish leaders as one thing. It's like, this is an internal argument. You guys work it out yourselves. I'm not going to get involved because, you know, you're just a couple of siblings squawking over something. And, and mom and dad, like, hey, work it out yourselves, guys. You, this is up to you to, to learn to deal with each other. Um, so uh, the interesting thing is here in verse 14, first part of verse 14, it says, just as Paul was about to speak, Gallo said to the Jews, this is one of those times where maybe it was a good thing to Paul, rather, didn't have time to speak up uh, because it gave him uh, cover, basically, or Christianity cover, um, until uh, the time of Nero. Um, this was looked upon as being a, a decision by the Romans, officially, that, that Judaism and Christianity were the same thing and not different. And, of course, it still is going to be looked upon, even in Paul's mind and James's mind and all of that, up until the, the destruction of the temple. Uh, at least until the, the martyrdom of James in 63 AD, which is still coming. Uh, we're not there yet. <clears throat> so, um, the, sauce, the, 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 the thing that we run into that's really peculiar is at the end, once, once the uh, Gallo has tossed these guys out on their ears um, and said, hey, you got no argument here. 
Um, and here we have God providing God's protection through an unlikely source, through Gallo, who is not a Christian, not a Jew. He's a Gentile. He is a Roman official. He is still protecting Paul. Uh, and we look at that as that's God's protection being executed through or exhibited through a, a, a non-believer. And that can happen. God can work through non-believers. Don't think that he cannot. He can definitely, definitely do that. I've seen that in my own life. Uh, I've witnessed that. But Sosthenes, poor old Sosthenes, he's the, the ruler or the official of the synagogue. Now remember um, that yesterday, um, the uh, the Crispus, who was the official of the synagogue, went and followed Paul. He left, became part of Paul's fold. So they had to get this new guy in, the Sosthenes, uh, who was taken over. <clears throat> And poor guy, the Jews, because he failed in his ability to get this all brought up before uh, Gallo, they've fallen on him. They, they want they want their ounce of blood. So they, you've come short. You should have been able to get this this taken care of before Gallo. The Romans should have been able to take care of this for us. You failed in your arguments, your presentation, the way you executed this. So now you're to blame. So you're the one that's going to take the beating. Um, and Gallo, of course, just. It's all up to you know. This is all inside stuff, you guys. You you know, you kids back there. You work it out. It means one of you is going to be beaten on the other. So what? Uh, um, I guess that's the way we, the way it's looked at. It's kind of harsh parenting. Uh, <clears throat> but Sosthenes is interesting because in in First Corinthians his name pops up. So some people believe, or at least that name Sosthenes pops up. Some people believe he actually became a Christian too. Maybe because of this beating. Maybe he said, "Wait a minute, <clears throat> my side's." picking on me, maybe I need to go with the other side. I don't know. It's an interesting thing. But the bottom line with this is it's God showing God's protection in a very unlikely way. And I think, you know, if you look around, you see God doing God's work through people that aren't necessarily God's people. If you look around, I think you'll see that in life. And I don't think that that's a problem. I think we should praise God that he's able to work through anyone, even those that don't realize they're doing God's work. So with that, I'm going to let you go today because uh, for some reason yesterday I maybe overdid it a little bit. And today my uh, my wind just ain't what it should be. Let's put it that way. And uh, my O2 is a little low this morning. So I'm going to let you go and I'm going to go get back on my oxygen. So have a very blessed day and please, please, please be a blessing to someone today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.